Hello, my name is Dr. Gilbert Tang. I'm the editor in chief for Jack Case Reports. And it's my honor and pleasure to present one of the interesting cases that will be featured at the European Society of Cardiology EFC annual meeting in London, England. And today we have the honor and pleasure to have our first and corresponding author, Dr. Elise Penny from the University Hospital of Heidelberg in Germany. Uh, it's nice also that my wife's from Germany, so it's nice to see a German friend here. And uh, yeah, so the title of this case is actually very uh, catchy and interesting. It's called Two Rare Syndromes in One Patient Determining the Cause of Sudden Cardiac Arrest. But first, uh, let's hear more about from Elise and tell us about your background. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm a resident at the Department for Cardiology, Angiology and Pneumology at the University Hospital in Heidelberg in the south of Germany. And I completed my medical studies here at the University in Heidelberg. Um, I wrote my thesis in the Department for Cardiology, specifically um, on cardiac imaging and cardiac MRI. And I began working at the department here about four and a half years ago. Well, congratulations. It's been remarkable. How did you get interested in cardiology? Uh, well, I was really fascinated by the diversity of the subject during my studies. There's really an array of different subspecialties that you can focus on, including cardiac imaging, such as in my case, or intensive care medicine or invasive cardiology really depending on your interests. And um, I was working at the department here during my medical studies, doing my thesis, and I met a huge amount of highly motivated medical professionals that are really keen on um, improving their patients' outcomes and contributing to a huge body of and growing body of research in cardiology. Fantastic. So let's uh, jump right into this case. Tell us about this interesting case. Yeah, so this was a really interesting case. A young patient, 19 year old, years old, he collapsed during physical education class at school. His um, teacher immediately started CPR um, and resuscitating him and the emergency services arrived. Um, return of spontaneous circulation was achieved, luckily, and medical history in this patient included Alport syndrome, which is a very rare genetic disorder um, which causes glomerulonephritis and chronic, chronic kidney disease um, due, to to, due to a defect in collagen type 4. So this patient already had chronic kidney disease um, stage 4. He had not required dialysis yet, um, but had been in close follow-up. Um, so the patient was transferred to a referral hospital. He was instable when he arrived. He had um, recurrent ventricular arrhythmia. Um, lab results showed hyperkalemia. And he was transferred to the intensive care unit. He required dialysis due to hyperkalemia and acute on chronic kidney injury. And once hyperkalemia improved, um, ventr ventricular arrhythmia also ceased. Um, and several differential diagnoses were considered in this um, patient, but ultimately the initial diagnosis was electrolyte imbalance due to uh, Port syndrome that had caused sudden cardiac arrest, especially because um, initial point of care ultrasound showed only mildly reduced left ventricular ejection fraction, um, right ventricle was uh, normal, uh, no wall motion, wall motion abnormalities. And once he had stabilized after a few days in the referral hospital, he was um, transferred to our hospital for further diagnostic workup, but also for evaluation of ICD insertion. And the first um, step at our hospital was really thorough, um, comprehensive echocardiography. And here, the proximal part of the right coronary artery appeared really prominent. So we decided to do a um, computed tomography angiography of the coronary arteries. And here we could see coronary anomaly, um, specifically a kappa, which means that the um, left coronary artery is anomalous and um, originates from the pulmonary artery instead of the aorta. We discussed the patient with our colleagues from, um, from pediatric cardiac surgery and decided to um, perform operation on him. We performed, our colleagues performed Takeuchi operation, um, which means that the the right coronary, the left coronary artery was transferred 
through via a tunnel through the pulmonary artery to the aorta. Um, and so we had um, dual coronary um, system again. And um, the patient recovered very well from the operation. Um, he was discharged after about two weeks and um, nine month follow up was good. Um, however, due to persistent chronic kidney injury, he is being preemptively evaluated for um, kidney transplant. Yeah, no, this is a fascinating case. The 19 year old, uh, you know, young athletic uh, person who you not expected to uh, suddenly collapse uh, during, uh, you know, athletic activity. And, you know, kudos to the team who were able to do a witness uh, aggressive CPL to be able to successfully resuscitate the patient and bring the patient successfully to the emergency room. And of course, this patient, as you mentioned before, has Alpert syndrome, has a certainly cardiovascular sequelae and association present that you mentioned before. I'm very interested to hear from you in your center when the patient presents to you, uh, what prompts you to do a coronary CTA to make the Alcapa diagnosis instead of a, like, a, let's say, a, con a coronary angiography? Um, well, in this case, uh, coronary um, computed tomography or um, computer tomography coronary angiography was really the um, optimal diagnostic choice for the patient because pretest probability was very low in um, this young patient for coronary artery disease. Um, and additionally, coronary CTA is the current gold standard for evaluation of coronary anomalies. Um, I mean, one really big advantage of coronary CTA is that it is non-invasive. And usually with the newer uh, machines that we use, um, it, there is also less radiation used um, compared to invasive coronary angiography. Yeah, no, that's an important point. So certainly at this uh, point, the patient was clinically stable, right, at the, at the right. hospital. So you he can uh, actually have the time to go to have a CT scan versus a patient, let's say, come in in shock, uh, you know, or, or near cardiac arrest or mechanical support, I do think that you have to take the patient to the cath lab to, to make the diagnosis because they would not be necessarily stable enough for the CT. Uh, on the top of that, I think, you know, it's important to look at the, the right imaging and you might be able to diagnose other cardiac structural anomaly using the CT that might not be uh, visible on angiography. I think especially that could be potentially associated uh, congenital uh, heart disease as well. Uh, so that those are great points that you brought up. Now, you mentioned that the patient was initially referred to your center for an ICD implant and the patient uh, did, uh, what was the heart team's rationale that it was not necessary later on? Um, well, we um, obviously, I mean, in Germany, we work according to the uh, guidelines of the European Society of Cardiology. And um, in the ESC guidelines for prevention of sudden cardiac death, ICD insertion is recommended um, in the absence of a reversible cause. Um, and in this case, we, in an interdisciplinary team, we considered coronary anomaly as a um, cause that it been treated by operation. So we decided against inserting an ICD. Did the patient go home on a, some kind of event monitoring just in case of any you know, future arrhythmias? Yeah, we recommended um, Halter ECG um, and we saw him quite, um, quite a few times after he was discharged in very short um, time, in a very short time span. But we yeah, no, saw no ventricular arrhythmias anymore. Right, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, last thing you want is another cardiac arrest while he's doing physical activity for, uh, for an arrhythmia, right? So I think that's exactly. very important uh, in, the, in that stand. So, yes, yeah, some form of post-op discharge uh, recording, I think, is, uh, is highly important, I think, in this, uh, in this respect. So now, what type of follow-up imaging would you recommend in someone with this condition uh, after the surgical correction of El Capa? So, I mean, one point that um, one point to emphasize in this case is the age of our patient. He was 19 years old, and most patients that present with El Capa are younger, much younger. They present before the age of one year. Um, so a lot of the data that of, of patients presenting with El Capa um, at an older age, it comprises single center um, reports or smaller databases. Um, so there's not a huge amount of, of um, data, 
but the reported um, outcome in general is favorable. And follow-up obviously includes regular clinical visits and um, echocardiography is an essential part of um, follow-up. Um, specifically in this case, in after Takeuchi um, corrective operation with the uh, with the tunnel, um, coronary artery, uh, coronary pulmonary artery fistula, and aortic insufficiency um, are common complications. So you'd definitely perform um, echocardiography regularly. Yeah, and the, my question is: Would you do uh, any follow-up CT imaging? You know, just to follow up on 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 any other. Uh, you know, features that you might look for? Um, at this point, if the patient is asymptomatic and he um, he recovers well from the operation and in a long long course, we wouldn't necessarily have it part as part of the um, standard follow-up, no. Only right. if we see abnormalities in the echocardiography or um, if the patient has symptoms. Yeah, understood. So, so in summary, what would you say to the audience? What's the take home? Uh, what are some of the key take home messages for this case? Well, I think um, this case really reinforces the importance of considering a broad range of, of differential diagnosis when a young person presents with sudden cardiac arrest. And every single patient should really thoroughly be investigated in an interdisciplinary team. Um, that can also include repeating um, examinations, such as in this case, if the initial exam is inconclusive and if this is also obviously feasible, um, we repeat an echocardiography um, with this patient. And then also um, this case emphasizes the importance of um, non-invasive multimodality imaging that can include echocardiography, it can include coronary CTA, um, cardiac MRI, um, but all of these examinations are crucial to identify the etiology of sudden cardiac arrest. Yeah, no, wonderful. I think this is a very important teaching case and that's why we, you know, uh, have decided to feature uh, you and your group, uh, you know, this important case highlighting the potential congenital heart disease, the uh, importance of uh, imaging, the importance of managing and diagnosing the arrhythmia. So it's really encompassing the true spirit of what Jack case reports about, that it's a really a, a global cardiovascular journal for all types of uh, topics and specialties and pulling all the different disciplines of the cardiovascular team together. So thank you very much, uh, Alish, for your contribution and for uh, publishing this case with us. And uh, you know, very much uh, congratulations and good luck on your ESC uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>